Hey guys, it's Max. Yesterday, Apple announced a new MacBook Pros, which have been due for an update, and it's the first major redesign since 2012. Now, they also announced a new version of Final Cut. Now, they're just calling it basically an incremental update, at least by the numbers. It's uh, 10.3 uh, now um, instead of 10.2. So it sounds like a small update by the numbers, but it's actually huge, and it's the first major change since, I think, 2011, so it's been a really long time. Now, the first thing I was interested in, along with all the new extra features and new cool stuff that I'll talk about in a later video, is the performance aspect of it. Do they improve the performance at all? So um, I right now I have my 2015 MacBook Pro with the dedicated graphics, 16 gigs of RAM, and I actually did a bunch of testing before updating and after. So I wanna let you guys know uh, what I found. So the first test that I did is a Bruce X. It's a rendering test, very well known. Most people use Final Cut and not care about the speed of their system if they're trying to compare. They use that tool. So um, I'll go ahead and open it. I'll show you guys what it's like so here is Bruce X, and right now I'm using the screen capture, so it's gonna be a little bit slower, but it's basically a 5K file with a ton of different effects, and it's using mainly your graphics to set, test the render performance. Just give you guys a little sample, and we're just exporting this, and I'm gonna go ahead and save. And we see it exporting right there. So once again, we're losing performance because I'm doing a screen capture for you guys. But basically, you time how long it takes uh, to export this sequence. It took 32 seconds with the old version and actually 33 seconds uh, on average. There's usually a little bit of a variance for each test with the new version. So no improvement really. Uh, the next thing I wanted to test is stabilizing 4K footage. Uh, now this takes quite a bit of power and Apple does a great job compared to Premiere Pro, uh, but uh, this is one thing that I do quite often. I love really smooth footage, so I want to see if there's going to be any sort of improvements here. Now, here is my, uh, my clip that I stabilized, 30 second long 4K clip, and this is all handheld footage. But running through both of those tests, there actually wasn't a difference as well. Each time I got 63 seconds to be able to go through, analyze that clip, and then apply the stabilization. Uh, and that, that does have quite a bit of movement. For clips that have less movement, it's faster, um, definitely faster than Premiere Pro. So no improvements there. The next thing that I did is I tested uh, exporting a pre a non rendered clip. So, if you guys watched my MacBook Pro announcement video, you guys would have seen that 15 minute video. Now, I actually took that and I cut it down. And so, you have three minutes of 4K. Now, this is kind of a standard uh, thing that I would do, a standard YouTube edit. So, um, I have some cuts, I have uh, some spots where I cut in closer to the 4K, I have uh, some actually some video some 4K video that's actually scaled down from a previous video that I was um, talking about. So that's scaled down. I have some titles, uh, some transitions, uh, some Ken Burns on some photos. So a variety of different things. And on the actual clip itself, I have an adjustment layer here and um, I'm doing some color correction, uh, changing my exposure a bit, uh, some white balance adjustment, and I actually threw in a little bit of sharpening as well for this test. So I have uh, just a slight amount of sharpening. So this is all unrendered. Um, so I turned background rendering off to see how it handles um, just having to render all those effects using the graphics and then push it out at the same time. So using uh, the share feature, so we're gonna go Apple Devices 4K, and this is what I typically do, and I usually change it to computer to do have a .mp4 wrapper on there, and we're looking at uh, 3840 by 2160. Hit next, we're gonna be saving that to the desktop, and, and we're just gonna be timing um, how long it takes, so we're sharing it right there. So those results for a completely unrendered uh, 4K three minute project with all those different effects and stuff added, those came out uh, to five minutes and 59 seconds for the older version and five minutes and 28 seconds for the new version. So there is some improvement. Uh, that doesn't seem like much, but when you do the math, that's a 10% improvement, and that is a pretty big deal. Now, when uh, Intel upgrades their CPUs to a newer, newer generation, they usually use less uh, battery, they have better battery life, they're more efficient, and they have some speed improvements, and it's typically 10%, 15%, 7%. Now, Apple is giving us basically almost like a generational processor improvements worth of e efficiency improvements in the program. So 
even though if you're not buying a new computer, you just saved yourself 10%. You got a 10% improvement right there. Now, I did those same things with those clips uh, once again. So I actually used Compressor, because they talked about Compressor improvements. And uh, Compressor had a similar improvement. Uh, we have about a 9% improvement from the old version to the new version, exporting 4K, not unrendered. Um, and then if we pre-rendered, so if you're editing with background rendering on, which most of the time you should be unless you don't have any uh, space on your drive, uh, there were some improvements as well. So actually we have a minute and 48 seconds with the old version and a minute and 36 seconds. So you can see it's much faster if you have those effects pre-rendered. So there we have a 13% improvement in speed. And once again, this is a short clip, so if you're doing longer projects, it's going to make more of a difference. But we have a 13% improvement. And once again, doing pre-rendered uh, using the compressor uh, with the QuickTime setting, it, it does, I think it re-renders everything. And so we have 6 minutes and 5 seconds versus 526. It's a 12% improvement right there. So pretty, pretty impressive. Um, I'm, I'm definitely happy with that, with just a bunch of additional features and then efficiency improvements as well. So uh, the next thing I wanted to test is 4K multicam. Now they did mention this in the keynote that it's gonna do 4K multicam well. And honestly, I was not expecting an improvement whatsoever. Let me go ahead and go over here to my multicams. Now I have some clips of these uh, cute little Pomsky puppies. I did a project for a breeder here in town. And so I have a bunch of 4K clips. These are from the X-T2, and they're H.264, so I'm not converting a ProRes or anything like that. And with the, the older Final Cut with this uh, MacBook Pro with the dedicated graphics, um, surprisingly, I was able to pull off a three-camera multi-cam. So I'm going to use this great button right there to give us some space right there. So we have a three-camera multi-cam. Now, this is 4K full resolution if you guys see here and i'm using original it's not optimized so let's see how this plays i'm going to mute the audio and it, it looks like we might be getting a little bit of drop frames because i'm also record doing a screen capture as well so uh but the old final cut handled three uh, 4K multicam with full resolution without dropping any frames. As soon as you would go into the four, four 4K files multicam, uh, full resolution, it would start dropping frames. And even, even if you hit optimized, it would start dropping frames again. Or if you did the, instead of full quality, the full perf or better performance. Now, here's where it got really cool. With the new one, I actually went into the four multicam with four 4K files, original H.264 uh, files that take a bigger toll compared to a ProRes on your CPU. And I actually got perfectly smooth multicam files. So once again, right here, we're dropping some frames because that screen capture, but that's a 25% improvement. I can now do a, a four camera, full resolution 4K multicam on a laptop and uh, the new MacBook Pro should perform even better with the, the much improved graphics card. That's really impressive to me. Um, just in a laptop being able to, to do that. Premiere can't touch that. Um, I don't know if you can even do 2 4K at full resolution uh, running Premiere. So I'm very impressed, very impressed with that. So we have a 25% improvement doing multi-cam 4K, once again, full resolution and not using optimized or proxy media. So very, very impressive. Um, and then along with that, another thing I wanted to mention is just being in the timeline. Um, it, this is something that's hard to measure, uh, but that same clip that I had before of the 2016 MacBook Pros, the ones that's not, that doesn't have the pre-rendering done. So background rendering off, uh, it has to process the color correction, the white balance, uh, correction, the extra sharpening, um, and in the older Final Cut, I would see drop frames just watching that. If it's not rendered on max quality, it would just be watching, it would be dropping frames and you can't watch it. Now with this uh, new update, and here once again, you're going to see more drop frames because I'm doing that screen recording, uh, but it, was, it wasn't completely smooth, but it was much smoother. So maybe if I had one less effect, it would be able to do that without have a rendered timeline. So we do get some smoothness improvements as well. So overall, I'm really happy uh, with the Final Cut improvements as far as efficiency. We have a bunch of new features that I'm gonna go over uh, my favorite ones in a later video. Uh, so if you have an Apple product, you're running Final Cut, 
uh, you're going to enjoy some speed improvements without having to step up to a new MacBook Pro uh, or whatever else. And once again, I do have a MacBook Pro on order with the best graphics cards and uh, the i7, something comparable to the model most people get for video editing. So make sure to hit that subscribe button so you guys don't miss out on that video and also the video on my favorite new features in this new MacBook Pro update. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.